Airstrikes and ground fighting underway just west and south of Ramadi as Iraqi troops try to retake the provisional capital. With more on this, we're very pleased to be joined by former intelligence officer Derek Harvey. He also served as an advisor to General David Petraeus. Colonel Harvey, thanks for Skyping in from Tampa and being with us once again here on Newsmax Prime. Great, KD. It's super to be here. And were you expecting the counteroffensive by the Iraqis to take place so quickly? Well, I think it's at this point in time working around the edges of Ramadi and it's more noise than actual substance at this point because they need, in fact, to change the the atmospherics and the political dynamic, particularly, you know, Prime Minister Abadi. So they're starting, I think, really before they're set. Well, I am curious, was this prompted by the critical comments that our Defense Secretary Ashton Carter made about the Iraqi army and its will to fight over the weekend? Well, I, I don't think there's a direct connection to that, although one could say that there might be some part in the decision-making influenced by Ash Carter's comments. But Ash Carter's comments were truly unfortunate because they misrepresented what was really going on on the ground in Ramadi. Derek, we talk about the risks of having the Iraqi military fighting alongside Shia militias supported by Iran. How much of a problem do you believe that uh, might be? Well, in particular in Anbar province, I think it's going to become more and more of a problem. There's clearly a sectarian Shia uh, characterization to the actions going on in Ramadi. They've, no, they've named the campaign plan after a you know, after Hussein, which is, you know, very important in the Shia context. So we're going to have some real problems, not at the beginning, but down the road. Derek, we heard that ISIS changed its tactics on the battlefield, which led to their initial victory in Ramadi, despite being outnumbered. Apparently, they utilized suicide bombers, drove sedans instead of pickup trucks, and banned all social media discourse and interaction concerning Ramadi. Did this change in tactics catch intelligence officials off guard? Clearly it did, and they achieved success because they overmatched tactically and operationally with mass, surprise, and maneuver, and it caught everyone off guard. Derek, uh, intelligence experts are really becoming overwhelmed trying to keep up with the social media barrage here in the U.S. from ISIS supporters, with some of the latest information suggesting not only United States military bases, but other locations and big events could be targeted in the near term. What are you hearing and what might we expect? Well, clearly there's increasing chatter about striking U.S based military targets, threats to U.S. military personnel, and large public functions that have a patriotic tone to them. So that's clearly chatter out there. Some of this could be designed to misdirect us. They are very sophisticated, just like this discussion about the threat of, import, of bringing a nuclear bomb through the Mexican border is being well within their means. They are trying to stir up a hornet's nest for us. And uh, on our parent website, Newsmax.com, Derek, that was one of the big stories this weekend, that the ISIS publication spoke of bringing a nuclear weapon across our southern border with Mexico. Is this simply designed to stir the pot? Is it more psychological warfare? Or could there be a, a, a grain of truth in this uh, report? Well, I don't think there's much to it as far as something to worry about substantively. And we've got significant safeguards on the southern border and protection capabilities. But I think this, you know, is part of their causing us to react to everything. And it helps mobilize them, mobilize their base, get funding, get more recruits, and creates this momentum that they have really driven through social media. Derek, yesterday, Memorial Day, we saw phoned-in threats against inbound airliners in the Northeast Corridor. Do you believe this is the same kind of, um, well, for lack of a better term, psychological operation or pranking of our defense systems? Well, it very well may be, and these will have to be investigated more to determine, you know, the actual origin and uh, motivation. But I'm very concerned that, you know, we can become overreactive to these things and we wind up chasing down every spurious allegation, phone call, intercept, and it will distract us from something that we 
aren't seen, you know, and our vigilance will be impaired. Well, that is always the challenge of intelligence, especially in the world of terror. Terrors, uh, terrorists only have to get lucky once in that perverse way to cause real problems. Colonel Derek Harvey, Skyping in from Tampa, sir, you have our thanks. Thank you. You heard what Colonel Harvey had to say. Your take on this flurry of chatter and accusations and possible pranks. You can send me your comments via email, newsmaxprime at newsmaxtv.com. There's also Facebook, facebook.com slash newsmaxprime. And don't forget about Twitter, twitter.com slash at newsmaxprime. And our program will be back after this.